Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. It's my pleasure to be on. Now, there's an author, Dan Gibson, who has written a series of books um, pointing out that the Qibla, the early direction of prayer for Muslims, was actually Petra, not Mecca. So, Dr. Shabir, we spoke about this a little bit earlier uh, in a previous episode, but I thought we'd go back to it because many people continue to have questions and ask questions about it. Uh, so, Dr. Shabir, I understand that you've read his books and you have a thorough understanding of his conclusions, so maybe you can tell us what they are. Yeah, so I'm still learning more, but uh, and let me tell you what I have, what I have so far. Okay. So this is one of his uh, early writings. This one is uh, called Quranic Geography, uh, published uh, several years ago, Independent Scholars uh, Press. Uh, and um, uh, subsequent to that, uh, this book received uh, a number of uh, critical reviews. This was published in 2011. And uh, Michael Lecker is a, a scholar on early Islam and uh, an academic, well known in the field has uh, done a scathing review of this, pointed out many uh, mistakes and absurdities in, in the book. Okay. Others have, have done critical reviews as well. And uh, one of the persons who did a review of this was David King. Uh, David King is uh, a known scholar specifically in this field about determining Qiblas and how early Muslims determine the direction towards Mecca and so on. So he did a scathing review. I read his review. He seems very personally offended that Dan Gibson could write a book like this. <laughs> yeah, see, he finds it quite appalling mm -hmm. that uh, somebody who is not a scholar in the field is dabbling in something that he poorly understands uh, from, from David King's point of view. And David King is uh, not only claiming that, but he is pointing out the obvious errors in, in this uh, man's uh, judgment and, and the way in which, uh, like the shoddy scholarship. Mm -hmm. that, that That's he, exactly that he what he said. Yeah. yeah. So um, in response to him, uh, we have uh, Dan Gibson himself uh, writing this uh, article. Oh, okay. Um, uh, responding to David, King, David King's uh, article uh, in which David King coined a new word for the direction that Dan Gibson is talking about. Pibla instead of Qibla, <laughs> because, you know, playing on the P for, of Petra um, to, to make that uh, into a word. And uh, I can see from, uh, David, from Dan Gibson's uh, response to uh, David King's article uh, that uh, Dan Gibson uh, unfortunately does not seem to, to get some of the points that David King is making. So, for example, when David King says, uh, you know, uh, Dan Gibson is saying that there is this uh, mosque uh, in China, uh, which was established like in the second year of the Hijra. And, and we know that it took a long time for Islam to reach to that, uh, that part of the world. Uh, so how, how could it have happened like in the second year of the Hijra? So, so David King made a passing remark that, you know, the Muslims must have had flying carpets. <laughs> so so D Dan Gibson is responding to that. Yeah, David King says that the Muslims must have had flying carpets. <laughs> and he's taking that as if like it's a seriously said statement, mm -hmm. uh, not, not uh, grasping that, that, you know, that points to the error in, in, uh, in Dan Gibson's thinking mm -hmm. to think that there was a mosque established in China this early on and he can go now measure that mosque and see that uh, the, uh, the mosque is oriented towards Petra. Mm -hmm. uh, in a similar way, like in the 8th century, uh, in the 8th uh, year of the Hijra, according to Dan Gibson, uh, there was a mosque established uh, in Kerala in, in India and that is pointing uh, also towards Petra. So for Islam, we know, reached uh, the shores of India much later um, um, for, at the hands of Muhammad bin al-Qasim. And, and uh, to think that it already had a mosque there in the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him himself, uh, this is really anachronistic. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but Dan Gibson does not seem to get these points. He, um, you know, he's obviously working in an area that is complex. It involves many different uh, fields of study. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, usually scholars just uh, become experts in one thing, mm -hmm. uh, rather than to have such a broad and sweeping uh, uh, knowledge of all areas. I mean, you've done your, your PhD thesis and you know that your supervisors will insist like you have to study one thing and study it thoroughly and write only on that one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, outside of that, you're just like a lay person. You will make mistakes. This is inevitable. Mm -hmm. With me too, same thing. Like, you know, I, um, uh, you know, I, I would have liked to say more <laughs> and, and expand my thought and speak about other areas. But no, you must write only about this one thing. Somebody may do a PhD thesis just uh, on the meaning of one word. It, it can happen, you know, if we're dealing with a word in, in, a, in, a, in an old language or a classical usage or something like this. 
So uh, it, it's it's natural that by trying to you know involve so much, Dan Gibson is going to make uh, mistakes. But he's made some serious ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, he doesn't speak Arabic either, so this is a big thing. Uh, that 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 too, it's obvious from from much of his writing. Although he has lived in the in the Arabic environments and he has picked up some things, but you know, studying the classical Arabic. Being able to read the uh, the classical texts uh, of, of Muslim uh, tafsir and hadith and so on, uh, this is all a little bit beyond him. So he relies on English translations, and as Michael Lecker has pointed out, sometimes by relying on the English translations, he has made serious uh, errors, mm -hmm. and he builds like mountains over the errors that you know on the erroneous understanding. So, Dr. Shabir, his his ideas are very popular. I hear them everywhere. I read them. Um, people are debating them, people are agreeing with them um, everywhere. Um, so the, I think it's important for us to maybe talk a little bit about what his main argument is and what his evidence is. Yes, and, and if you don't mind, before I go into that, I'd just like to mention that following his rebuttal to uh, David King, and uh, David King oh, followed okay. back up. <laughs> so this is, this is uh, one of his latest writings. This is 2018. Uh, the Petra Fallacy, okay. uh, in which uh, he's saying uh, the early mosques do face the sacred Kaaba in Mecca, uh, but Dan Gibson doesn't know how. Mm -hmm. So, so basically, what uh, you know, you, you, I, I'm, I'm going to come back to the details of this, but I want to address the the point that you mentioned that uh, it looks like this is popularly being mm -hmm. received, and uh, we should distinguish between the academic world and and the popular readership or maybe viewership. So um, let's talk about the academic world. In the academic world, his theory does not wash because the, the academic scholars know that uh, you, you have to have context behind any, anything, like you, you're making a discovery. So, wow, that sounds great, but okay, what is the context? We need to know the social, the historical context. So if you find that a mosque is uh, a pinpointed accurately towards uh, Petra. Now, there has to be a story, uh, a, uh, an understanding of why it is doing that. So Dan Gibson's uh, uh, theory is that people were trying to face Petra with their mosques. Now, this is problematic from two uh, perspectives. One, from the perspective of historical studies. Uh, first, uh, the study of Islam. Like there is no concept in the minds of anyone anywhere that we can detect in any writing that people thought that they had to face Petra. Mm -hmm. Th there's no such concept. Probably Petra is not even really mentioned much. Uh, is, uh, within, Petra is not even the hadith, mentioned. Hadith, anything. Yes, exactly. Not mentioned in the hadith by name. Uh, so uh, not even mentioned, much less, uh, <laughs> you know. And, and we know that uh, from Islamic studies that there have been many disputes among Muslims. Um, um, over very minor things. And, and the disputes are recorded. <laughs> like uh, to the extent that if somebody says that in your prayer, you're supposed to move your finger in a particular way at a certain juncture, like how to move the finger, this is also like recorded. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying that the, the you know, the, the, all of the views are accurate or that even the, the records of these views are accurate. They could come later, like there could be a later dispute that people are trying to imagine back as an early dispute and they're framing the narratives that way. But the, the fact is that there are narratives. But when it comes to the idea of people turning uh, towards Petra to pray, to pray, there's no such narrative. Mm -hmm. Now, Dan Gibson's idea is that uh, the earliest Muslims were facing Petra, and they did that for many years during the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. After the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, died, the Muslims continued to face towards Petra for, uh, you know, for decades. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, during the uh, latter half of the first century of Islam, uh, a revolt occurred among Muslims. Abdullah ibn Zubair, uh, the, a, a relative of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Aisha's, uh, the mother of the believers, uh, nephew, um, Abdullah ibn Zubair, um, uh, um, uh, moved, according to Dan Gibson, uh, let me start with, the, with what is known to be the standard narrative among Muslims. So Abdullah bin Zubair uh, took control of the Kaaba, which was in Mecca, and that was his, uh, his station. And in the meantime, uh, there were uh, Muslims in Syria, uh, and uh, Muawiyah was the, the governor of Syria, and he proclaimed himself as a caliph, and after him, his uh, his son, Yazid, and so on. So the, the dynasty in Syria 
uh, were now opposed to Abdullah bin Zubir, who was in Mecca, and a war broke out. Uh, they used their uh, machinery at the time, their war machinery, to uh, demolish the Kaaba. Perhaps not by intention, but a fire broke out, the Kaaba was uh, dis demolished. So the Kaaba, according to the standard Muslim narrative, was in Mecca. And um, uh, Dan Gibson's idea now is, uh, no, the Kaaba was in Petra. And when uh, the, the Syrians attacked it, they destroyed it. Uh, they destroyed that which was in Petra. Mm. But Abdullah bin Zubair took the black stone from Petra and he moved it to Mecca and then rebuilt the Kaaba in Mecca. Mm -hmm. uh, so, of course, we know that Abdullah bin Zubair rebuilt the Kaaba, but he built, rebuilt it on the old foundation, which was right there in Mecca in the first place. Uh, so the, the whole Muslim story is constructed around this. Like we have uh, scores of eyewitnesses, people from that period, not only scores, but thousands, because uh, it is estimated there were 10,000 people living in Medina at the time of the death of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And you can just imagine that in the decades that followed, uh, the population just increased uh, because more people wanted to come live where the Prophet, peace be upon him, lived. And of course, more and more people were being born in that area. So everybody in that area know where they were facing. That's the Kaaba and that's where we're turning in prayers. And nobody thought, okay, we're turning towards Petra. <laughs> There's no wink of this in any uh, record anywhere. Mm -hmm. Now, Dan Gibson wants us to imagine that the, uh, the Kaaba used to be in Petra, which is north of Medina, and then somehow it was moved now to south, to Mecca, and that uh, everybody would now orient themselves towards Mecca, and, and nobody is protesting this. Like, how mm -hmm. can you imagine? Can you imagine this in any religion? <laughs> like, it doesn't have to be Islam. In yeah. It could be Judaism, Christianity. It could be Buddhism. It could be Hinduism. You move a sacred site uh, and, and, and you expect everybody to just follow you as you move the sacred site? No, people are going to protest. They're gonna, there's going to be a faction who says, you know what? We're going to stay with the old site. We don't mm -hmm. care what you say, but, you know, kill us if you want, but we're going to stay with the old site. But, but nobody uh, says we want to stay with Petra. Mm -hmm. Dr. Sabir, why does it seem like some mosques were facing Petra? Mm. So uh, in, in Dan Gibson's uh, most recent book, Early Islamic Qiblas, uh, published a couple of years ago, he uh, gives uh, a, a good list of uh, early mosques that he has surveyed and he has found that uh, many of them are facing uh, towards Petra. Uh, so um, uh, uh, David King, responding to this as an expert in the field, says, okay, let's take your data as, as given and, and assume that you've worked it out correctly, uh, you know, even though, you know, this is questionable in its own right. But mm -hmm. let's assume that that is correct. Uh, now, that does not mean that the earliest Muslims had this technology and this knowledge of how to make your mosque face Petra, even if they wanted to. Mm. So let's say some early Muslims thought, okay, let's make our mosque face Petra. So how would they work it out? Because the mathematical formulas to, to, to get this right took many centuries for Muslim scholars to develop. Uh, Dan Gibson is saying, oh, but the early Muslims knew mathematics. But, uh, you know, we, we know that this, uh, uh, this kind of study flourished in Muslim societies from about the 8th century onwards in the Abbasid Caliphate. Uh, it wasn't the earliest position of Muslims. So the earliest Muslims just used folk astronomy. Mm -hmm. uh, they used some very basic methods. Uh, they, uh, they, they wanted to know, for example, um, you know, how to face the Kaaba. Well, when, when you're right in front of the Kaaba, you can look at it directly and you're standing right in front of it. But when you go away from it, you don't see it. How are you going to know where the Kaaba is? Um, so, so Muslims used folk astronomy. They, they thought of uh, the cardinal directions, like east, west, north, south. Mm -hmm. So if they were from the north uh, of the Kaaba, if they were in the northern regions, they know that basically the Kaaba is south. Uh, so how would they find south? They would look for a southern star mm. and, and that would be their basic direction. If they were south of the Kaaba, they knew that the Kaaba is north. So like let's say they're near Yemen, for example. So what would they use? They would use the pole star in the north. They mm -hmm. knew that it's in the north and the pole star will guide them. They're facing north. Now, uh, uh, Dan Gibson can say, look, in Yemen, they were facing towards Petra. But uh, as David King points out, well, if you're in the south, 
and you're facing north, uh, then you would face both Mecca and Petra, <laughs> you know, with uh, certain degrees of uh, variance mm -hmm. because they're lined up. Petra is to the north of, of Mecca. So when you try to face Mecca, one can draw a line and say you're trying to face Petra as well. But that's just imaginary because there is no reason to think that anyone was trying to face Petra. Similarly, if you're in the north and you're looking down south, if you're north of Petra and you're looking down south, then one can say you're looking towards Petra or one can say you're looking towards Mecca. That becomes a matter of interpretation. But there is a whole story that shows that Muslims were deliberately trying to face Mecca, but not no, no indication that anyone was deliberately trying to face mm -hmm. Petra. They were using the scientific and astronomical tools that they had at the time. Exactly. To try sincerely to find the Qibla. That's right. To Mecca. Their intention was to face towards Mecca, but to uh, the Kaaba, uh, to Muslim, the yeah, Muslim scholars, Muslim scholars realized that uh, it, it would be impractical to demand of Muslims uh, everywhere that they must fa uh, f uh, face towards the, the Kaaba in Mecca with pinpoint accuracy because such accuracy was beyond people. And the Quran says, uh, you know, that God is not going to uh, burden you with more than you're capable of doing. Uh, so this is the general Islamic principle. So Muslims have arrived at uh, great latitudes in, in the prescribing the, 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 the direction towards the Kaaba so that to the extent that some have said that if you are off by up to 45 degrees, you're still okay. You're just facing that general direction. You don't have to uh, hit it with pinpoint accuracy. Up to 45 degrees, either way, you're okay, which means yeah, a, that's 90, pretty large. a 90 degree spread. Mm -hmm. Any, anywhere from within the 90 degree spread, uh, so long as the Kaaba is in that general direction, you're, you're fine. Mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, when Muslims uh, go and they find a building, they want to convert that into a mosque, uh, they can just use it as it is. So long as it points in that general direction, it doesn't have to be with pinpoint accuracy. You don't have to turn the whole building and go through all of the construction <laughs> costs and all of that uh, to, to make it aligned towards the Kaaba. So there's this flexibility in the religion. In fact, the, the greatest flexibility that is known about this is reported of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him himself, because he was in the north, in, in Medina, uh, facing towards Mecca in the south. And he told his companions, according to a hadith, that your, your qibla, your direction of prayer, is anywhere between east and west, mm. which means that he's giving them 180 degrees spread. Anywhere between, you know, you're just looking in that general direction, your prayer is okay. Uh, so when Muslims naturally traveled out of that area and they went east and west and so on, and they wanted to think, okay, well, where, where's the Kaaba exactly? They realized they didn't have to find it with pinpoint accuracy if they were, were to the west, uh, they, they looked east. And uh, to find east, how would they find it without having a compass at that time? Uh, they knew that the sun rose from the east. And uh, if, if they were farther down south, they, they knew that uh, from their perspective, to align with the Kaaba, they should probably look at the uh, at, at the uh, summer uh, sunrise, and uh, if they were uh, uh, somewhat north, they would look to the uh, winter uh, sunrise, which would be uh, towards the south, so that they would fi follow that alignment. Uh, the same same thing by reverse is uh, what happen if they happen to be in the east. They would look to the west, to the sunset, and they would pick either the winter sunset or the summer sunset, uh, depending on uh, where they are in, in their latitude. Mm -hmm. uh, all, in every case, their intention is to face towards the uh, Kaaba in Mecca, uh, but they knew that they didn't have to follow it and, and face it with pinpoint accuracy, just that general direction is fine. Now, uh, coincidentally, coincidentally, because of Se Petra's central location um, in terms of latitude, uh, when people in the east were trying to look west, uh, the, you know, the line of trajectory uh, could easily pass through Petra. Mm. And so too with people in the west, when they're looking east, their uh, line of trajectory could easily pass through Petra. So that would explain why many of the mosques uh, are oriented apparently towards Petra, not by any deliberate plan of, of the architects, uh, but uh, because they were trying to face east or west by following the winter uh, sunrise or, 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 or summer sunrise or, or, or sunset from, from the two seasons. Uh, to think then, as, as uh, Dan, Dan, Dan Gibson is thinking that, oh, they, they, their mosque must have, uh, you know, 
deliberately face towards that would mean that they would have to have those mathematical formulas and they would have to have the, uh, the astronomical knowledge. And they didn't have that at that time. Now, uh, Dan Gibson is saying, but you know, they had the astrolabe, but uh, as uh, David King is pointing out, the early astrolabes were not good for pinpointing the direction of the Kaaba. So this is all imaginary on the part it's conjecture. of- Yeah, it's all conjectural and it's based a lot on, um, on, on silence, arguments from silence. Okay, this thing is not mentioned, so it must have been Petra. So for example, like he goes through, through Tabari's uh, account of the history and he comes to year 70 and he says, okay, year 70, it's blank. So what must have happened in year 70? Now he has the full scope to fill it in with all kinds of imaginary uh, you know, uh, d uh, events that must have happened in the year 70. And it's on such uh, arguments from silence that he builds a lot of his uh, theorizing. Lots more we could talk about, Dr. Shabir, but we have to end it there. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. If you enjoyed this video, click like and subscribe. And please donate to support our work at Quranspeaks.com.